The Ghost Recon franchise cut its teeth on tactical squad-based warfare on the PC, but only once it brought the formula to the consoles did it become a hit. It's been half a decade since the last release, and Ghost Recon Future Soldier enters the market at a time when attention spans were at an all-time low. A more thoughtful shooter than most, can it still keep adrenaline levels high? All right then, let's go get these sons of bitches that did this. <laughs> Get out of there! Get clear! Get clear, move! Things start off interestingly enough as a bomb goes off in Nicaragua, killing several U.S. soldiers. What begins as a hunt to find the perpetrator quickly turns into hackneyed globetrotting with a squad full of military caricatures called the Ghosts. The plot practically decapitates itself. Since you're always looking for the bad guy, a clear villain is never established. Thugs and scumbags come and go, but there's no sense of cohesion between each level. Some of the cutscenes aren't quite bad enough to be good, and some surprisingly lack authenticity. One scene has the ghosts rescuing a hostage without ever checking under the hood to see if they have the right person. It also shamelessly rips off its contemporaries, right down to the obligatory helicopter ride set to a poignant classic song. I shot the sheriff, but I didn't shoot the deputy. Future Soldier's campaign is split into chapters with fairly frequent checkpoints. While the path is relatively straightforward, there's enough space in the level design to provide some latitude in how you handle each conflict. With no narrative to drive you forward, it amounts to a gussied up tutorial that teaches you the ins and outs of the exhaustive collection of gear and guns. Six missions in, the bag of tricks is pretty much emptied, and the remainder of the campaign drags. You can work through it with three friends online, but it doesn't make the last half of the game any more enjoyable. Like many recent shooters, it appears that the majority of development resources have been spent on multiplayer. You won't find any deathmatch or capture the flag modes here. In fact, the variety falls well short of the standard set by 2007's Advanced Warfighter 2. It's all about objective-based skirmishes across 10 different maps. There are four different game types, but save one, they're all different spins on capturing and defending. The exception has both teams trying to carry a bomb to a blast site to detonate it. Guerrilla is its take on horde mode for up to four players, and it also focuses on capturing and holding. There's a leveling structure that strikes a nice balance between work and reward. Occasionally you're given a choice between two free weapon attachments, but you have to earn the rest. At each level reached, you're awarded with attachment points for each of the game's two factions. You can then spend these in the gunsmith interface to unlock every part and parcel of a gun's construction. From muzzle to butt, you can build the ultimate weapon. Aside from being extremely slick, the exploding interface actually teaches you how a gun is constructed, and how each component influences its abilities. So they actually got those working. Not bad. Community is important in games like this, and it does a great job of keeping you wired into how your friends are playing. You can even send or accept challenges. And while the campaign is limp, the multiplayer has immense staying power for those who enjoy a more tactical bent. <laughs> No matter whether you're playing online or off, the gameplay is built around detection. You can toss sensors that will reveal enemy locations or fly a UAV drone above the fray to uncover their positions. The campaign is split into two different mission types. There are the typical kill everything that moves objectives and some levels that require stealth. The latter can frustrate because detection leads to instant mission failure. Eventually the battlefield is loaded with foes and it's difficult to determine their field of vision. You'll fail and have no idea why, turning the later stages into exercises in trial and error. Engage as necessary but don't alert anyone. Playing cooperatively doesn't alleviate the issue because human controlled soldiers are more easily detected than those manned by the computer. In multiplayer, detection is often the difference between victory and miserable defeat. If no one on your team uses sensors or drones, you have no chance. The nature of the objective-based modes also encourages camping as you attempt to defend each capture point. Out. Demo charge in place and armed. At least when the enemy does come calling, you can utilize the best cover system in the genre. Moving in and out of protection is quick and intuitive, and once you've settled in behind an object, you can pop up and down or side to side with ease. The only caveat is that pulling out of cover can be a little clumsy, making close quarters confrontations awkward at times. <laughs> Despite a fairly generous aim assist, shooting is handled very well. All the weapons feature their own spread patterns and effective distances that can be tweaked with attachments. In the campaign, you can mark targets in order and then perform a sync shot where each member of your squad drops an enemy at the same exact moment. On your shot. 
computer isn't especially smart, so they'll run directly into danger, even after watching their comrades get dropped right in front of them. Your teammates fare a little better, aided by the fact that the enemy almost never detects them. They can navigate the environment to find a clear shot, and they are actually effective at felling foes on their own. Do it. Online, there are two teams of eight with two squads apiece, and you can spawn on any of your squad mates provided they're not too close to an objective. There are no kill streak rewards or perks, but suppression is a viable tactic as it will actually affect the enemy's display. There are three classes that fit the assault, engineer, and sniper archetypes. All of them can revive teammates, and there's enough gear variety to make each one a compelling play. How long's the team need? Pro? About 30 seconds. You'll control a lot more than guns, and whether you're handling the armaments of a quadped warhound, flying a drone, using melee, or escorting an injured ally to safety using one arm, everything is intuitive and interesting. Hook in, let's go! Future Soldier cut some corners with its presentation, but its visuals still hold their own. The filters used for optics look great, the levels feature a nice variety, and it manages to create a lot of tension. The HUD has entirely too many things to address, yet it never looks cluttered or becomes confusing or distracting. Textures get a little dicey up close, some objects could use an extra polygon or two, and the set pieces lack polish, but it runs at a steady rate, and there are plenty of objects to duck behind. The voice acting isn't particularly good, but it's not helped by the writing, while the music fails to make much of an impression. Let's get it together. Let's go, gentlemen. I don't like being on the ground. If you buy games for the single-player experience, it's hard to recommend Ghost Recon Future Soldier. Once you hop online, it's a different story as the tactical, objective-driven modes manage to fill the five-year void left since the release of the superior Advanced Warfighter 2. It's heavily reliant on teammates who are willing to play specific roles, but with a group of dedicated soldiers, it's a war that you'll want to keep fighting.